All right, I'd like to call the meeting to order for the Board of Selectmen on July 27, 2020. It is 6.01, and we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, until further notice to keep our members and staff safe and to comply with RSA 91-A, the state of emergency and governor's orders restriction on public gatherings, the town of Alton is moving from in-person meetings to remote audio participation meetings. To remotely attend the meetings, audio only, visit our website, www.alton.nh.gov. For instructions or telephone, the Selectman's Office at 603-875-2113 or 603-875-0229. There continues to be no public input at this time. Okay, amendments to the agendas. Chairman? Yep. I'd like to talk briefly, probably when we have the lady from the Water Department on tonight, a little bit about the situation with the arsenic levels. Okay. Old business, and she's going to be talking to us with old business anyway. I, I, okay. I'm assuming. Your old business? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're on water department because we'll have her on for the EJ press call. Okay. And I'm going to add five to new business the Asian uh, um, water department for the truck. Okay. No announcements. I make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Hello, uh, Bob? Yay. Paul? Yes. Bill? Yes. Virgil? Yes. In favor? Submission of public comments. We have one here. It's on the Grand Hill Realty. But we do not respond to um, anonymous complaints. We won't use your name on the air or anything, but we do not respond to anonymous complaints. That was voted in well over a year ago. The next announcement is Mr. Shea. I would like to ask the Board of Selectmen to consider the town employee manual on on our web, town website. Some time ago, I requested a copy, but was advised it could only be made available at a charge of 50 cents per page, a considerable cost given the size of the manual. I was afforded the opportunity to review the manual on site, which was somewhat helpful. I expected the manual to be a topic, employee, typical employee handbook, but instead found it to contain detailed instructions on all manners of town operations. I understand an effort is underway to rewrite the document, separating it into the employee's manual and an operation manual. This certainly makes sense. Posting the manual on site would afford taxpayers the opportunity to understand how the town functions and might have an added benefit of encouragement suggestions for changes. I can't see any downside to doing so. Also, like to repeat a request I made back in May, asking if if would it be possible to post the Board of Selectmen minute recordings within a short time after the meeting. Unless I'm mistaken, the most recent post posted recording is on June 15th, a full five weeks ago. I don't know what's involved, but for citizens following town government activities. A prompt posting would be helpful. Now, the manual we do not put on the website because that has personnel in it. So we do not post that on the, our website. The, <clears throat> any other comments on posting the manual? I don't know what's involved, how, how soon the... Uh, the, 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 the minutes for the meeting? Yeah, I don't know how soon it takes for 
the, the videos to go on. I, I don't know what's going on. So usually it takes a day or two. I mean, we have, you know, during this state of emergency, things have been done a little differently and a little quicker when possible. We did have some problems with the server back maybe, I don't know, a month or two ago. And so there was a delay there then. But um, you'll notice at the end of selectmen's meetings, Josh stays here and he works. What he's doing is he's doing what he would do the following morning, a day or two, depending on what else is needed. Um, and he's doing stuff with the audio and the video and he's putting it into a file for the ladies in the selectmen's office to start on the minutes, and then he puts the video onto the website for viewing. So basically the problem has been solved as far as we have to wait too long for, for it to be up. Yeah, it's just everyone needs to understand nothing is perfect. There were hiccups along the way, and we have certainly had our share of hiccups during this state right. of emergency with this. No. With the Zoom and, and everything. And exactly. Yeah. Okay. I noticed the Zoom is gone tonight, right? No, we're, we're oh, audio. We still, and, we still are? Yeah. Of course, um, it's, this, this got shorter and it said audio only. Oh, yeah, that's probably it. Well, <clears throat> we had a request to shorten that top paragraph. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> now, do we have to get into the clock moral fund to get him a bedroom set to put in there? <laughs> Back him down Saturdays and Sundays he's in here. Right? I know, I know. <laughs> Well, I hope that helps you, Mr. Shea. Do the best that we can. Okay. Appointments, we have none. New business, emergency management, portable electronic sign. We have Ryan. Ryan. Can we get Ryan on the phone? I have this exact number, but I do have somebody called the call-in user, so I can try that out. Try them all. We'll find them in there somewhere. <laughs> Make it work. Oh, we'll get them. Him, just hang up. Back off with the phone. Someone enable his audio. Yeah. Yeah. Find me somebody else. Brian, is this you? Hello. It is me. Ryan. <laughs> we are on the portal Good electronic sign. Yes. Yes. Uh, so what this is, is uh, this is the formal purchase, our, our emergency management grant that we've been working on for the message board, electronic message board, has been approved now officially um, through all the channels, including governor and council. And we received the award letter that I think you guys have seen or have in front of you. Um, this is the formal invoice to make that purchase and to move forward with it uh, under the grant. Um, so I'm just looking for final approval from the board uh, to go ahead and move forward with that purchase. Once we make the purchase, I will submit for full reimbursement using um, our emergency management meetings and staff that attend those meetings as our soft match for the grant portion. Okay. Now, the grant's going to cover this? Yes, the grant will cover it. Um, we're going to be short. Um, it, it only covers up to fifteen thousand, so we're going to be short um, the balance over fifteen thousand, which I'll have to pay out of the operating budget. But we will submit, yeah, the six hundred and ninety-five dollar. Um, we will, we will, we will. Once we pay that, though, that six hundred and ninety-five dollar balance, we will submit to the under the CARES Act, the Gopher Act, for COVID yeah. as well as a COVID expense. Okay, that sounds good. We need a motion. Mm -hmm. Make a motion that we approve the emergency management team for the portable sign for the grant for. For the sum of uh, $15,000, $695. Second. Second. All those in favor? Oh. Oh, oh. oh, oh that's right. Bob? Right. Oh. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Virgil, yes. Thank you, Chief. Good job. Thank you very much.
<laughs> All right. Appreciate it. You good gentlemen. Have a good evening. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Now we have number two, highway department, bid specification, equipment outfitting for 10 wheel adopt. You get 10 on there? Yeah, John. Fine. Thank you. Good evening. Ken. Ken, how are you doing, Ken? Very good. Okay, a little explanation? Please. Okay, what we've done is gone back through the numbers. I think we sent up a a list of the Equipment Capital Reserve Fund, exactly where the purchases have gone out. What we have remaining is about $65,000. Because we're keeping the sander from the 10-wheeler, it brought this into play that we have a good possibility of ordering the equipment for the 10-wheeler now as well. Now, the problem that we have right now, the six-wheeler has been delivered to the equipment place the dump body, who, which was already been ordered when we awarded the bid, is still five months out. So putting this package together for the 10-wheeler and putting it out the bid, there's no guarantee we'll get it in right away. That may be another seven or eight months out. And that has That's to do it. with Canada. I'm sorry. That's the that email that you all have at your seat. Are we going to be able to have these trucks for plowing? No. No, we'll be lucky if we see the, the six-wheeler that we've already awarded uh, by January or February. And it all has to do with dump bodies coming out of Canada. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Katie, uh, what's the holdup on the six-wheeler again, the dump body? Yeah, the dump body itself, and that's because the way we we ordered the package through Viking, um, it's the dump bodies that are being built in Canada and shipped to the U.S., which many of the, the bodies are being done that way out of the Canada. And Can Can Canadian people are being a little different with the COVID-19. Well, you know, if I remember properly, Mr. Chairman, fellow board members, uh, that wasn't the low bid. And uh, I had a question at the time on when we could get this, these products. And here we are, right back where we started from. Uh, didn't realize that dump body was coming out of Canada. So you, you, you all have this at your seat? This was a text message from... Almost 99% of the dump bodies come from Canada. It's not any one individual retailer that's carrying it. It's everybody. Everybody's having the same issue. Well, I, I you know, I haven't checked into that. I, I just know this, boy, that's an awful long time. And this email that you're referring to, I just got this tonight. So did I. Yeah. We, we all did. Okay. It was sent as a courtesy. Why, yes. can't put the sand, why can't you put the sander right on the frame for the winner and then send it in for the body when it gets here? It will take some manufacturing in order to do that. It's not a flatbed. Yeah, those I mean, mean, are yeah. Right. Hey. And, and this isn't the first time. I mean, the last little truck we ordered, we didn't get till February of the following year. So yeah. it's... You know, that's on the last one. I just wanted to be able, after I did all the numbers, we were able to order the 10 wheeler because we're going to be in the same boat with that. But right. actually, we weren't even putting that out to bid till after March's town meeting. But because we are keeping the sander from the 10 wheeler, we actually have enough money left in the capital reserve to go ahead and start this process now rather than next March. Right. Yeah. That's the reason I brought it up. And I'm just showing you the reason because the dump bodies are so far out. I mean, that was ordered the day we gave them the bid. They ordered everything, and they're still waiting. And believe me, they're not happy about this whole thing either. I understand how that's, I'm sure none of them are happening right now. It's happening with the lumber industry as well. It's across the country, you know, pressure treated across the country, trying to come in. It's it's coming in little by little, but yep. even, the, even all the... All the work being done by 
marine construction outfits are really feeling the crunch. They're traveling oh, yeah. everywhere just to get bits and pieces. You can't get lumber. You can't get anything right now. Nothing's coming out of Canada. And that's not us. That's Canada. They're being protective. Right. And, you know, I understand that. But, and again, yep. I, we ordered the bid. It's awarded the Viking. I'm just trying to show that if we ordered that 10-wheeler or we put it out to bid and we ordered the 10-wheeler right away, we'd probably still be looking late. But, you know, at least we get it ordered now. Right. It should be here before March, I hope. So, Kenny, what is yes, the quote here that you want, the 53000 for the quote? No, no, no. Yeah, that was just a quote to show you that it was below the 65000 that was left in the Capital Reserve. The quote was just to show you that I'm able to put it out to bid, and it would be an acceptable bid. That's yeah. all that was. That was just a quote to show you where the numbers are at. Right. Now we'll put it out to bid officially by the bid specifications, and basically those specifications you see on the quote are what no. we put it, we're going to put it out to bid for. Okay. Yes. Kenny, in the backup, you have the quotation for 53355 but on the next page, you've got a stand-up for 20845 That's what we're not getting. Getting that, okay. right? They're, they're, they're keeping the sand up, oh, taking that one out. Yeah, keeping the old sand up. Okay. That's question. what we saved by keeping the sander. Right. Okay. Good. But another question on that dump body issue: What's the brand of the dump body? I Do you know? think that's Brandon, but I'm not positive. Brandon. Yes, and it has a 210 psi bed on it. Anybody else? I make a motion that we allow Kenny to put the 10 wheel um, equipment package out to bid. I'll second it. Discussion? All right, Bob? Yes. Bill? Yes. Paul? Yes. Virgil? Yes. All yes. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Ken. Go far. We got one more with you. Yes, sir. Went to stand bid. Yeah, it comes out every few years. It's just another bid, and this will be the reason we're getting it out right now, so we can hopefully get some results prior to the you seeing the budget, so we know where we're at. Yes. Paul. Two quick questions. Yeah. Uh, on your bid specification, general information. You have a certified labor. Laboratory test results, materials meet and exceed the Hampshire DOT specifications. Do, you, do we get that information? Yeah, we can request a SIF test through them, and they've actually there's actually samples that are dropped off here most of the time when they do it. Good. Uh, and the DOT specification is nothing more than a SIF test, so we don't end up something with three inch rock in it. So you have records of that? No, I can request it. I can request it from the company if wanted. Yeah, because it says right here. I'm very familiar with getting the test results, but I just didn't know if you do or not. I've uh, seen them. Okay. Another question I had, Mr. Chairman, was uh, Kenny was. You've got it for 221, 2022, 2023. Yes. In the price. Yes. What happens if next year you find you can get it somewhere cheaper? Uh, are we bound to this for the three years? Unless the company backs out of it, I would say we are because it is a contract that we're signing. Okay. And the idea of that is they can plan on it as well as everything else. We found out that most everything came in cheaper. Right. By bidding it out for three years. I just want a clarification okay. of that. That's all. Yeah, we're lucked out pretty good with this, the three-year bid. Yeah, and, and, the con we, and in the contract, it shows we have a, we can negotiate two more years on the contracts. But it's very important that those laboratory tests, believe me. Okay, I need a motion. I 
I make a motion. Well, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. You got another question? No, no. I move that uh, we uh, recommend. So, I mean, specification, uh, sand bids for three years. Second. Park. Yes. Park. Yes. Bell. Yes. Virgil, yes. All yeses. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kenny. Okay. All right. Wentworth yes, Pond. Wentworth Pond DES notification. This is on the cyanobacteria alert. Wentworth Pond and all. Surface blooms can rapidly change, accumulate in various. As a result, New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services has issued a cyanobacteria alert. For those who use the bodies, water bodies for recreation, please continue to monitor your individual shorelines for changing conditions and avoid contact. The alert is not based on a toxin evaluation and is intended as a precautionary measure for short term exposure. This is on Wentworth Pond, which would be the Merry Meeting River. Because we already have this in Mills Pond, which is across the street from the fire station. Yes. We have high concentrations. So this is on Mills, Mills, uh, Wentworth. Wentworth. Pond, yes. On the Mary Meeting River, right by the dam. Yes. We don't need any. Very concerning. I think it's interesting that the uh, state put up those tiny little signs, more or less indicating, don't eat the fish. In Mill Pond. Well, we put that up. Uh, I thought the state said no. they. I thought the state took that over, and it was their job at that point. No, we put the so, signs up. So originally, they asked that it be posted, and they supplied yeah. a couple of signs, oh, and okay. we we put them up we on behalf of DES. Yeah. But then the selectmen, I think it was last year, asked yeah. that more signs of the same yeah. sign. Right. The schools were still bringing the kids down there, yeah. and, and the yeah, red yeah, sign yeah. looked like it went to the fire department. Mm -hmm. Because they had the dry hide in there. But there's people fishing there. Every They're in there kayak because people yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. Well, I think that we should. I think we should yeah. drive sheets where the culvert is and close that pond off from getting into the river. We don't need a motion on that, right? That's just information. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Five would be water department. The amendment, a water department, which is truck. Yeah. Jay Prescott first. Sorry, people. No, no, we have the truck first. It's five under the oh, business. Okay, all right. That's what I was looking for. Her email on the truck. Okay. Courtney, right there. Is Courtney on? Courtney. Hello. Good evening. Courtney, we are discussing a truck. Yes, so um, I came to some of you in October last year requesting a vehicle and we tabled the, uh, the quotes that I got. Um, yeah. Right now I've found um, what I think is a really good deal um, is a 2019 F350. Uh, V8 diesel uh, with a eight and a half foot V plow from Portsmouth Ford for forty six thousand five hundred ninety one dollars. Um, the reason I'm asking to get a truck is because of the extensive repairs that we've done on the white truck. Um, I think I you may have gotten the work order list from the Highway Department mechanics. Um, and this this list is not for the life of the vehicle. This um, spreadsheet was generated by Carrie when she started, so she hasn't been here for the life of the vehicle. But since 2017, the estimated repairs have been about $4,300 to the white truck. <clears throat> um, it's had multiple whale bearings replaced disc covers, axles, rotors, pads, multiple. Why are we uh, what's that? 
Why are we going through wheel bearings so much? Are they well, being put um, in right? right? One, one specific one when I was here um, was a faulty ball joint um, sent from uh, Rochester Ford. So they actually, uh, I think if you, you look on May of 2019, um, we repaired that twice. Um, that would be a question for the mechanic. Um, I did speak to Warren today um, about the vehicle. Right now, due to be repaired, is another wheel bearing, the sending unit fuel pump, the evac canister. It needs another alignment and possible catalytic converters. Uh, he lifted it up today, and the utility body is starting to really bubble. Um, and some of the doors and over by the cab corners. Um, we were both discussing that that truck is pulling the excavator. It's, a, it's got 65,000 miles. It's getting worked. Um, on top of the, the weight of the excavator and the trailer, that's loaded up with a thousand pounds of grass. Um, so like I had explained before in October, I am driving my vehicle to every job site, and I have been for the past year and a half. Um, it's loaded up with equipment. When the excavator is loading up the dump truck, that's being used, and usually the white truck is torn apart with every tool we have on job sites. I'm running for parts, pipe, um, anything like that with my truck. So my plans would be to get this pickup truck make it the guy's truck, there, there will be DOT legal so they can pull the excavator and make the current white truck, the 2011, the superintendent truck, um, which if, if we baby it and do the repairs and you know just use it for you know, extra parts, um, my plans were to put a, a gas caddy on it so we don't have to disrupt our are digging to fuel up equipment. Um, that would be what I would like to do with the truck. Um, I understand. I don't. I know we need a truck down there. How yeah. close are them guys to getting the CDL? I mean, we discussed this a year ago when we bought the one ton about having a CDL for that. Well, I understand that, but you can't just roll up with the equipment we have and expect to get, you know walk in there and get your CDL. We have to no, have make sure everything's in tip top shape before we send it down there. It should be in tip top shape anyways, because we're a municipality and if there's something wrong with the truck, we need to get it fixed because we can be sued for it. Right. But, they should you know, be, even if they got to borrow one of the town trucks down the town bond to go get a CDL, they should be working on that. It does. It's no, not free one, anymore to just go down there and pay for your test. I realize it ain't free. You got to get a book, study it, and then go down with the truck and take it. Yeah, but you need to pay for that now. Yeah. <clears throat> if I if I remember correctly, it was mandated that it was going to be five thousand dollars to go and take your CDL now. Oh no, it ain't five thousand dollars. If you go for a school, a course for it. All you got to do is get a book and study it and go down and take it. Get a driver's test. Right. You get a driver's test. Mm-hmm. They have the book right in the front door, driver's safety right there. They're right in the box by the front door. Okay. And, and any of the highway guys, Mr. Chairman, could help them. Right. Of course. They've well, done, done it. Yes. I That's believe I mean, they changed that five thousand dollar fee due to COVID because you know there's no classroom time or anything like that. But. You don't need classroom time to take your CDL. You can study the book and go down and take the driver's test right down there. You don't need a certificate from classrooms or anything else. Okay. It was just down there last week. That still doesn't. I know. Satisfy I know. the problem. It's still with the white Problem. Have you been taking care of, of, of paying for any repairs or anything on your truck? Have, I, have yeah. I been doing what? 
your own truck, you've been taking care of any repairs and tires on your own? I have not put in for mileage or anything for my vehicle until last week. Okay. So, um, you know, that's, that's my thing is, you know, I'm, I'm the only department head that is in their own vehicle on job okay. sites, you know, um, running my own truck. And I agree with you 100%. You shouldn't have to run it. shouldn't have to be doing that. I think we always agree with you. You shouldn't be using your own vehicle. The issue with the chairman is buying a truck. That's and the school of the police. I found one thing I'd like down here. One vendor at a uh, finance plant. Mm -hmm. Is that something we should be looking at more or not? Well, the way I looked at it is that we have finance trucks in the past, but if we have the money, why add a 5.9% interest rate? Right. With the same warranty. Yep. Hey, Aunt Courtney, town administrator yep. would like to speak. Yep. So, in the past history of the town government when purchasing vehicles, it's just purchased outright, save on interest and everything. Unless it's a lease, the lease, there's some interest in it, and that's for a certain amount of time. We do that with the police department. Most of the time, we put it in front of the people. And then, and then you know, one, one other exception would be a bond for a fire truck, because that's, you know, right. any, about a million dollars or so. Right. But to buy a pickup truck, um, generally, the past practice has been to just go right ahead and purchase it outright as long as you have the funds. Use the wrong phrase. Now we have, a, I meant to use the lease. The one time is a lease. Was the lease from is a, what, 12,000, a little under 12,000 a year? A little under 12, yep. We didn't get a lease price on this one. Yeah, yeah. Hill Pro Ford did. They did. Oh, yeah, that's well, the last one down the list. Well, well the, the other issue, and I don't mean to interrupt you, is, is there's not a lot of trucks available. Um, no, I know. The, the production has completely diminished. Um, Irwin's in Laconia actually won the state bid for this vehicle, and they don't have any left. And they don't have it coming. So this, this one is a 2019 leftover, which is you know $10,000 less than the other vehicles. <clears throat> I, I agree with her that she shouldn't have to run her personal truck. Say that again, Liz. I said it's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, oh, no, she shouldn't be using it. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no argue with that. No, there's no issue. That, that's no issue there. We have, really using it that much. Mm -hmm. we have the 47000 in the account. Yes. What? Oh. Yep. Sorry. I thought you were just saying that out loud. Yeah, the... Uh, the account right now available will have 313,000. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, you know, on Fisher Snowplows. Yes. The plow price is through Portsmouth Ford. Pardon me? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. It's the plow price through uh, Portsmouth Ford? Yes, because they're installing it. It doesn't come equipped with a plow right right now. They're going to install it. And that's the standard price that I've been getting right. through all the quotes. You're still going to keep the plow on the white truck? Yes. That way, you know, if the white truck breaks down, there's another truck with a plow. If we get a heavy storm, Someone can go out or I can go out with one truck. We can clear hydrants quicker, uh, especially if we get those back-to-back -back storms where you get three, four feet around the, the hydrants. Right. You can send two people instead of one guy in one truck plowing and the other one just along for the ride. Not saying that's what they're doing, but, you know, one will yeah. shovel. This way you, you hit two different areas of town and get things done quicker. Because yeah, right now, if we if we break down with the white truck, we don't have a backup plow. And as much as we like to borrow as much as we can from the highway department, 
when they're slammed, they're slammed as well. Yeah, but they got a whole bunch of trucks down there for you to borrow. <laughs> <laughs> got to have a CDL. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well. Courtney, uh, what kind of cab is on that truck? It's just a regular cab pickup truck. So because of our VAST program that we're discussing with the inventory, we're not going to have to carry as much stuff on the truck. We're going to equip the shop. Everything is going to be on there. They'll have a very limited brass supply, everything that they need, and we'll just do toolboxes. Just because the, just the utility bodies, the locks stop working. They start rotting out. Um, the doors open oh. halfway around the rotary. I, I just, they're not, I don't think they last as long as the truck could. Nope, no, they don't. So this is just a straight eight foot bed with just a yep. uh, one seat cap. Yep. Automatic. Uh, automatic. Stand, probably yep. automatic. Diesel. Yeah, and they all come standard with the, basically the same. You get the power windows. They do have backup cameras now, which is good for a safety. Yep aspect but um, that's not anything extra that's what they're coming equipped with but it's just an xl work truck yeah but i like the business of town if it's possible mm -hmm. you know what i mean i mean i like her to get a price and come back next week to plow over there well okay, if it comes just well, not plow well, well the problem is with this mr chairman is that truck's not going to probably last long in that plot, believe me. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, these trucks, I didn't find them. I, I did talk to Courtney today, and I told her, you know, these are usually, these type purchases and additions, this is an addition also to the water department, mm -hmm. done through a budgetary and a planning process. Mm -hmm. And I understand the situation. Bob, this was discussed prior to you becoming a selectman in October last year, yeah, um, yes. and it was it was told to be tabled. Um, and I talked to Ruben today, and he actually said, you know, I was I was wondering when you were coming back to yeah. to discuss this. So it's not a completely blindsided situation. Um, no, well, I'm the new guy in the block, so I'm yeah. I'm just filling you in on the past. Yeah, you know, Courtney, this is Paul. I remember talking last year about it. Yep. And uh, I didn't hear from you this time, but uh, looking at it and, and knowing that you've been using your truck for a year and a half, which is that we shouldn't be asking you to do that. We shouldn't have to do that. Well, I was trying uh, to keep the budget down, you know. Yep. I wasn't, you know, our gas lines, you know, it, it goes up and down. Right. So I was trying to, you know, do the decent thing. But eventually... It, it comes to the point where you know you got to do something here it's i mean i'm going home with curb boxes in the back of my truck and just you know Girl. Uh, no. no we all yeah. agree i that. just blew that budget all the hell i think um, <laughs> i think it'd be a good idea to, to look into this and not wait too long because i think this is going to go fast How long well i will you, tell you I will. um i I talked to Liz earlier and um, because this was going to be just fit in the uh, the agenda today and she wasn't sure it was going to be able to be put in there. Um, I reached out to Portsmouth Ford and the gentleman told me that basically, you know, it's a 2019. It's a hot item. We get a lot of people interested. Um, if you're not meeting with them tonight, when are you going to meet with them? And I said next Monday. And he said, if it doesn't sell by Friday, I'll hold it for you. That doesn't right. seem very comforting to me. <laughs> so, no. No. Oh, no. No, I that. mean, you're jumping up ten thousand dollars for the next truck in line. So, I think we should we should act on it. But and the money's going to come out of the fund department revenue fund. Okay. Yes. It's going to be right in the motion. I think we ought to act on this, and uh, I'll accept the motion. I make a motion. I make a motion that we. Um, Approve Courtney to go to um, and, and to uh, look at the picking up the Portsmouth Ford pickup truck uh, for the sum of forty six thousand five hundred ninety one dollars. Uh, 
Florida's allotment and not revenue fund. Revenue fund, yes. The second. I'll second that. Seconded by Bob Holt. All those in favor, Bob. All right. Paul. Yes. Bill. Yes. Virgil. Yes. Thank you very much, guys. Don't, Appreciate it. Don't go anywhere yet, girl. Yes. Don't I'm go still anywhere here. yet. Well, I can still say thank you. <laughs> oh, you're, you're welcome. Right. <laughs> Second thing is, are we going to fix that sidewalk? We yes. We can't leave a so, sidewalk tore up like that. No. So we have um, a bunch of different paving to do. Um, and it's going to rain tomorrow, but our plan is to pave before the end of the week. We have a couple different Stay patches. Uh, What's that? Be a good day to pave. Be a good day to <laughs> pave if it's raining. Yeah, so we try to make it worth our while. Instead of taking a bunch of different trips to Brock's, we try to get enough to do a couple different patches. So that's on the agenda for this week. But I think if it's not, it should be roped off over there. Okay. If somebody don't walk in the sink or trip or something. Then Come back at you. It was all filled with gravel and compacted, but we can go over there and cone it off for sure. All right. The next is um, EJ Prescott contract. Yep. So um, basically, um, Liz and Attorney Sessler had some um, concerns with a few items on the uh, contract. Um, one was the 90 day. Um, contract um, to, to end the contract. Um, Bob from EJ Prescott said that the third, we could change that to 30 days. Um, so the contract that you guys have in front of you, all we have to do is cross out 30 days and initial it, and he will entertain that um, for the contract. So nothing has changed as far as our um, agreement with EJ Prescott for the VAS program that we discussed at the last meeting. Liz, you said you changed some stuff on this? Yeah, that was that was one of it. I did that in the signature file. Yeah. Yeah. The other one had to do with the insurance coverage. The insurance certificate was for the Waterworks Department only, and I had them include the town of Alton um, as an additional insured, which we require on every certificate of insurance. And Attorney Sessler has given it a full legal review, and it's good to go. Okay. Sounds good. No questions? I make a motion that we sign the okay the contract to EJ Prescott for the water department. Second. Motion made by Virgil, seconded by Paul Larochel. Yes. Bob? Yes. Bob? Yes. Virgil, yes. <laughs> One more question, Court. Don't go anywhere yet. All right. Thank you. This one's from Phil. Okay. Um, How's the arsenic level situation coming along, Courtney? Okay, so we are only required to test every um, three months, uh, every other year, I'm sorry. Um, that sample was taken for quarter, I think, I believe it was quarter two. The well is still being worked on. Um, we should be tying that up by the middle of next week. Um, you know, like I said, with the, the Shipping has been slowed down. Vendors coming in as far as electricians and whatnot, it's, it's been hard to coordinate. Um, so when we turn that back on, um, we will be required to test every quarter. Um, and we can do some um, non-compliance testing to kind of see where we're ending up before we do our compliance testing and see how the well's performing. Um, but once the well has not been turned on, um, it's still under maintenance. There's actually no power to it right now. And what are they doing to the well? Rewiring the building? No. Well, they have to. They have a panel that has to be wired, and then the the pump guy needs to come in and run the wires to the the well pump itself, and then they yeah. need to do a startup test. Okay. How long? Would it be before the state comes in the long arm of the law and try to give us tremendous fines on this? Well, that would be all dependent on when they change the the regulations. So, in 2021, the arsenic standard is is going lower, um, and that's for all municipalities. Any public drinking water systems need to meet the new guidelines. 
Um, do we have to, go ahead. What's that? Do we have to add any more equipment down there for the ASNIC to lower it? We may have to, yep. Um, with discussion with the state and the past testing, um, it's been kind of up and down. Right. But uh, with the new regulations, we, we could have to put in some arsenic mitigation because the new standard would be 0 0.001. And we've had numerous samples over that, so I, like that limit. I don't know about the board, but I think it would be worth looking into that to make sure we can get the setup and what it's going to cost us. And we have a heads up but before we get done with a thousand dollar price tag. Maybe nice. If to look we into do it, have we to put that filtration in, you're probably right. looking into um, extending the building. Well, something we might want the town attorney to look into. Information has been given to me that these new regulations signed by the governor amount to an unfunded mandate. Yeah. And back in 1984, there was an amendment to the Constitution. That's unconstitutional with the state constitution. And I think maybe it's, uh, it's Amendment 28A. It was passed in 84. And it might not be a bad thing for our town attorney to look into that, look into that, so that we're prepared in case uh, the state tries to clogger us with these new this new regulation that might be unconstitutional. White was to send it up to Jim. <clears throat> yes, I would. Uh, I can give Liz the it's, it's Amendment 28A passed in 1984. Okay. Uh, no unfunded mandates, which is what this is. Well, that hasn't passed yet. What's that? I don't believe that's passed yet, the new mandate. Oh, no, I thought that 2021, they go into effect. But he signed it, right? The governor signed it. Well, he did. <clears throat> yeah, it. That's why I'm saying this, yes. we, sh we should look into it. Yeah. All right, any more questions for Courtney? No. Okay, Courtney, you may go to bed. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Have a good Thank night. You. Have a good night, Courtney. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Special events, Castleberry Fair. Yes, town administrator would like to speak to it. Um, Josh, is Ryan still on or not? No. So this application came before you months ago actually back right. in the winter right. I remember. And, yep and it was put on hold and then the state of emergency happened and it didn't look good <clears throat> to have it but since then um, restrictions have loosened a little bit and we've discussed this particular event at the emergency management team meeting regularly and so at a recent meeting it was determined that if the vendor could meet the criteria that is set by the state then the EMT would be okay with it, and then the board would could approve it if they wanted to. So, um, did that, so I could, I'm ask. Yes, go ahead. that also include uh, not having quite as many vendors. Yes. Reduction in vendors, which would be up to Castleberry Farm, uh, Castleberry, uh, to determine who was allowed and was. Yes, and normally she would have between 70 and 80 vendors, right, I believe, yeah. maybe even more. I'm mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, big. But she, she's cut it yeah. down to 48, I think it is. Yeah. But then, yeah, it. Uh, there's a, a map, a sketch on there yep. with her proposal. Um, <clears throat> so if if you do approve this, which I, I you know, it's, it's your decision, but if you could add into your motion that that you approve it pending the emergency management director being okay with with everything that she has presented because he wants to go down there and and check well, it out you know with her and make sure and double I, check right okay. I think two things one is we're going to be supplying the Alton Bay Community Center. And they're going to have to pay extra for the cleaning of it because we're going to have to go and wipe it down because they use the bathroom and everything in that community center and it's going to cost us because 
if we're making them wipe down the services, then we're going to have to put somebody down and wipe down our services. Yeah, that's going to so need a thorough. So I think we need thorough. to charge them extra for the cleaning. A thorough. Um, what I mean, after yeah. the, uh, yeah. during it and after, because I mean, if we, if we say you've got to wipe down your boots and clean it, then I think that we have to put somebody in there to wipe down the community center during the day. Or, or at least, you, you know, or the other we, we can we can work on yeah. it, you know, or or there can be some supplies in there, which actually they could supply themselves, and whichever vendor uses it needs to be sure to clean, you know. They touch uh, the thing. You know, well, the other that, option is not to use the building. Right. Exactly. That's not to use the building at all. I think that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. That sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. I think we should even use the building that should be closed. Well, I don't think they have to. And there's no reason that they have their own tents. They have their own public, they have their public restrooms down the yeah, street. Yeah. I don't think we even need to use the building. And I would like to make sure that they don't right. interfere with the swim docks and they don't interfere with shippers. That swim dock has been quite busy. Oh, yeah, it has. And I don't think they should be able to interfere with the lawn and stuff right there by the swim dock. So you did you look at the diagram? I'm looking at the yes. Diagram. Yes. Right. Okay. And I think that I think that we have to we're on a thin line there because we're so busy this year. I, I know down there that we're on a thin line whether we put them across the street with party vendors or something. But I think that that waterfront. I don't think that we should be tying that up all weekend because it's very, very busy. And extremely busy, especially yep. at, uh, people lining up at parks and for this parking. Yep. Um, uh, We've had a hot parking lot that nobody's working, so they're all up. Been jammed every weekend. And I, I just think really it would be giving a building. lawn over by Pops or something to open that water up. Well, I mean, I, that's that's your decision. Well, that's um, why I'm asking you because you, you well, do fairs and stuff, don't you? Farming markets and stuff. Well, that's different. So you, that's, yeah, I know, but you different. know about this more than I do. Well, they, we do. Well, she, she has come back with a re revamped mm -hmm. proposal to yeah. the board yeah. after doing some research with the state of New Hampshire guidelines that the, the governor pack. has put into place. Um, you know. And it does not include across the street on the other side. Of the and I realize that, but what I'm saying is where she's only got the few tents, it might be worth putting them all over there. I don't think 48 tents would fit over there fit. because she's already separated them out. You can see yeah. that. Uh, and, and I realize that. Right beside the other. And yeah. Are we taking pictures of the grass and everything? Oh, yeah. We'll so do we the, the pre-inspection and the post-inspection. Okay. Yeah. I don't see any reason why she can't use the outside of the building and all the way around. She's only got three yeah. vendors on the inside. Those three vendors could be on the outside without, without too much difficulty, I would think. So how how about then? I mean, this is your this what everyone's talking about is changing her re revised proposal. How about if we ha I have it rescheduled for the next meeting? Have her in. Uh, remotely attend, yes. and then you can talk to her about all these different things that you are considering. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and then yeah. you could, you know, because I, I can't answer for her. I, right. I don't know. Right. I, I don't think anything should be across the street, then, to be honest with you. Yeah. But I'm talking about just the building with those three right. vendors. Everything else is pretty much speaks for itself. I'm talking about the three vendors that are inside the building being relocated would be basically. Inside, inside, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Forty-seven, forty-six, and forty-eight. Yeah. Okay. The rest of them, the rest of them can all set. And just talking three vendors. Yeah. So it shuts the building off. It just shuts the building. The yeah, well, the doors. Shuts the building. I think and it's pretty simple. That just needs to move for it. I think that's our main concern. Yeah. yeah. It's, well, I think that you don't have to clean it. I think you ought to put on the rental of the community center right now, anyways, because we should change the rental agreement that you have to pay for the cleaning and the wipe down if people yeah. rent it. Right? Yeah. Or, or maybe you know you would allow her to rent a one quarter potty for the vendors. You know, there's right. there's all kinds of options mm -hmm. right. that you really you need to think of all these for the next meeting. I'll get it rescheduled. Right. Hey, can you yep. can you put the um, community center rental on there? Because I think during COVID we have to spend extra wiping it down and everything. I don't think five dollars rental cover it. You know what I mean? Because we get going and wipe, wipe, make sure the toilets are washed, make right. sure the handles are washed. So this, a lot more than what we normally do. This would be something for discussion at the next meeting. Right. All right. I'd also like to know what your plans are 
how do the vendors plan to enforce social distancing in their little tents? Yeah. She yeah. must have a plan for that, I'm guessing. I'd just like to know what it is. We have to leave that up to the emergency team. They're going to have to inspect it. Yes. Yes. So they're the ones that would yay or nay. Yeah, I'd like to know. Yeah. That's going to be inspected. Make sure she does what she's saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. they. Management team going to. I would think they would inspect it right there. John, and they might come so, We think. So, all right. So the emergency management team will not inspect it while it's going on. But before, well, before it opens. But beforehand, before. what I mentioned earlier was the emergency management director will consult with her, right. go on, meet yeah. on site to make sure that everything is, you know, right. separated enough. Properly. Yeah. Yes. Right. But only after the board approves it, and your approval would be conditional yes. as long as she is able to do. To satisfy all the requirements, it's kind of like two approvals here, almost. You know, right? Well, like when yeah. You you set you you know you set your yeah. your right for for the whole property and everything, and then the emergency management director will make sure that she's following what you've approved and also what the governor is mandating. Right. Yeah. It takes both. I see it's shut down. Well, that's the, I mean that, uh, technically that's an option, but no, shut it down. No, no fish, but, shut it down. you know, maybe no, that's the easy way out for it. The thing is, it is make it work. I think they could even. I think they could still do this with a lot less than than even the forty eight. Well, that's something that you would need to talk yeah. with her you talk, because things. you have a certain it point. She's like, no, it, it only makes sense for so many vendors to make money. I get it. Well. Uh, not so much the vendors to make money, but she's got to be able to break even to make money. That's what I'm talking about. She's I didn't talk about that. It's, she does a lot. Okay, moving on. Selectman's report. Bob? Oh, Bill? The uh, <coughs> old, home, old Home Day dash Old Home Weekend Committee has not met since the last time we met. We're meeting tomorrow night. Okay. Okay. Um, it does seem that there's going to be a water band stand concert on the Friday night nice. band weekend. 14. And I still haven't got a clear cut. This is God's honest truth. This is going to happen from the fire chief about the barbecue. But the last time I asked him, he said, we're really heading that way. But I mean, we, if we're going to call it the weekend. We got to know. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, the car show with the entertainment and the food trucks. I can tell you more next week about that. I, I would imagine that Roger, our chairman, will have to meet with the chief of police as to the positioning of the food trucks, that sort of thing. Okay. And uh, I know Roger last year promised to work with the businesses out here so that there's ample parking for them, right. which okay. I believe he's doing. Good. Thanks. So basically, <laughs> Is it old home day or is it old home weekend? Unless Main Street shut down, it ain't old home day. <laughs> Trying to do something, so quite frankly, I think the town needs a reason to come together and do mm -hmm. something. Oh, yeah. Is that it? That's it, I'll right. have more for you next week. Conservation meeting. We discuss Jesus Valley and Mount Major Parking. Jesus Valley, the Conservation and the Forestry Department is working on people at the end there. There's a little tote road that goes up onto the long landing up there. So we're working with the people. Mr. Wilder and everybody's working with the people. So we might have to set a time for him to do about 200 feet of road just to make it passable to a big parking lot, which the truck has to pull up there and do about a four point turn to get turned around with the cloud. This he'd be able to go up and then have a hammerhead. We'd get about 25 cars parking, which would relieve the parking on Jesus Valley. Mm -hmm. And the forestry department is working on Mount Major parking. But about it, they are working on it to yeah. get it expanded. And we got a big a um, timber cut application for that whole side of the mountain. Really? Yeah. We might have views. View technician to go in. 
You got quite a few timber applications, but Dewey Hill, Stockbridge, Cedar Mountain, Alton Mountain. We got like six of them the other night. Okay. Yeah. And all big cuts. So if they are working on the park and they're hoping within the next month or so to have Jesus Valley figured out, maybe we can send Kenny in there to do fix the road up like he did up on the mountain. Yeah. And put a because the path the logging land is all there. We just gotta kind of decent it up. So it's being worked on. That the signage that was put up from the Jesus Valley Road help? Help some, yeah. Because I was still thing when they were putting them in. Yeah, and there's still a lot of cars. So we're hoping by opening up the parking up there, it'll give it relief because you, you'll be able to fit like 20, 25 cars in this log line. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it'll give that end of the road some relief. Blocking people in and stuff. And this. Okay. Thank you, Mr. C. Chairman. Um, I have a few things to bring up. The first one is you you all should have received my email um, in regards to Green Oaks Realty LLC versus Town of Alton, the town one, hands down. Yep. Yep. I sat and read it the other night here before conservation. Okay. Uh, the next thing, um, which is in your binder, is um, we have received two separate letters from Primex in regards to our workers' comp program and unemployment compensation program, uh, we are receiving two premium holidays mm -hmm. from them, which is kind of like a rebate. They do this every so often, not necessarily every year, but right. the workers' comp, we will be receiving a check for $29,809.88. Nice. Unemployment, we, we will be receiving a check for $1,191.35. And how much are they going on? Don't know. We won't know until November. <laughs> we won't know. Uh, the next item has to do with um, a document that's in your binder from Santec Engineering. Um, Santec Engineering has been hired by DO, um, DOT in regards to the East Alton Convenience Store on 28A. Apparently, some history must show some leakage of underground gasoline tanks. So Stantec is doing taking water, water stamp, drinking water samples from different properties in the area. And we happen to own one, which is the transfer station. That is why they put the above tank in to begin with. And okay. They just tore that out. So in order for Stantec to go onto the property and take a drinking water sample, they need your approval. And um, there's a... So they can go on to the dump, probably? Yes. Yep. There's an access agreement, um, which they sent. If you... Um, yeah, yeah, right. I've had the attorney look at it. Everything's fine. So if I just need a motion to approve the site access agreement and authorize me to sign it on your behalf so that they can get this done. All right. That's it. That's, well, that's it for that. I've got one other thing after that. But, but what, Mr. Chairman, what's the benefit to the town? The there's people? no benefit to the town. No, but it helps your citizens to make sure that, that, that they don't have the uh, PFOAs in their water. Well, from our property? No, it's from East Alton Gas Station. But they're talking about going on our property. Because they have to test the well up there. They've got to test the drinking water to see if, this, if the contaminants back from when it leaked is traveling. And just like they, they do the same thing up at Irving's on top of 140. They have a bunch of wells up there from the spill, and they test it. I'm very familiar with what they do. What are you asking? That's not a good area. Our area. Why? Test all our, we have test wells in there for contaminants anyways. Yeah. yeah. This is for the drinking water. Specific product, gasoline. This is for the PFOAs. They're not testing. Well, they want to take it out of a spigot, and there's one spigot up there, right. and that is on the outside of the superintendent's office. Right. So they need to let it run for about 10 minutes or so, and then they take the water sample from the spigot. That's how they're going to do it. Have we ever done that? No idea. No. Not in my time here. 
he to the best of my knowledge, any of the water that's up there is not potable water. We don't drink that water. Exactly. The town, the town don't even drink their own water. Yes. Okay. I mean, look at our water bills every month. For well, bottled water, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. For water. No, but we don't drink it, but they have to test it to see if the contaminants are moving that way. Good. I make a motion that we allow Syntec to test the water at the dump. And, and authorize me to sign. And authorize list to sign the agreement with them. Agreement. I'll second. Yes. Paul. Yes. Phil. Yes. Virgil. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then the last item I have. Geez, if somebody didn't have nothing. We should go to law. <laughs> I don't have any non-public. Uh, is uh, in your binder also yeah. under TA report you have a memo from me in regards to the town boat launch repairs you asked at the last meeting uh -huh. <clears throat> to for the finance manager and I to look into the, the best amount. place to and this is it which is basically the funds for the town boat launch repairs would be a railroad funded. square path. Yep, expended out of the grounds and maintenance budget, the railroad square park line item. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is the bottom line budget, those those costs would be covered in the uh, patriotic purposes Perfect. budget. I'm just going to say that, yeah. We've got five here as the funds will be covered out of the, the fireworks. Line. So yep. we're using both? No. So the funds. Hang on, guys. So the funds stay in the patriotic purposes budget, the fireworks line. Yeah. They stay there, but you spend out of the grounds and maintenance budget. So that line will be overexpended. Okay. But it's a bottom line budget, so the grand total of the entire town budget, one will cover the other in the in the Why don't we just take line. it out of patriotics and say that? Because she's doing it hundred percent right. This is how you do it legally. I know, bottom line. Thank you, Bob. Bottom line budget. I'm sorry, you are. Uh, you don't need to apologize for agreeing with me. <laughs> I make a motion that we Thank you. Repair the boat launch and the repair money comes out of Grounds and maintenance, railroad square pack line 01 4194 759. Second. Discussion. Yes. Paul? Yep. Paul? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have, Chairman. All, right. um, all right. Now we go to approval of minutes, July 20th. Make a motion that we approve the minutes from July 20th, 6 p.m. meeting. Second. Bob? Yes. Bill? Yes. Paul? Yes. Yes. Or do yes. Chairman? Yes. Approve the minutes of July 20th. Public. May I make a comment, Mr. Chairman? Yes. So these have already. Oh been wait! Seen. I got a motion on the table. I got oh, a second. Okay. First. All right. Second. Okay. So these these non-public minutes have already been sealed, as you can tell, and if, in accordance with the legal opinion you got last week, there's no need to reseal them. They're they're, so we they're sealed. Them. So we need to get them out. They're, they're sealed. No, you need to approve the minutes, the draft okay. minutes. Okay. You just don't need to reseal them because they're already sealed. They stay sealed until you unseal them. Well, I should put down. The motion should read and approve the previous sealed on public minutes. That's a good way to do it. That yeah. I approve, approve them and unseal them. Hey, I'll second that. All right. Bob? Yes. Paul? Yes. Phil? Yes. Yes. Okay. No consent agenda tonight. That's correct. And no non pub tonight. That's correct. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Oh, I gotta take a poll for that too. Bob? Yeah. Yes. Bob? Yes. Bell? Yes. Yes.
don't know why you're saying yes, Phil. <laughs> 